where I just wanted to build a little aesthetically pleasing charging station for all of my camera batteries. Batteries. <laughs> Sound like a like like Eminem with a with a nasal infection. Camera batteries. <laughs> What is going on, you guys? All right, so here's the deal. About two and a half, three weeks ago, Dallas, which is where me and Kate live, instituted a shelter in place rule, mandate, law. I'm not really sure of the semantics as a lot of us haven't been during all this COVID-19 insanity, but the point is, we've both been working home for about two and a half weeks. Well, we realized really quickly, now that both of us were gonna be working from home, our setup was gonna be inadequate. We've always had uh, one office studio space, which is a space that you see behind me. It's our little uh, office space right there. Hi, Kate. As a matter of fact, if you've seen these videos before, you've seen this shot quite a bit. We've played songs here. We've sat and done product reviews here, but there is one other place in the loft that none of y'all have ever seen. Right over here to my left, your right, is our, uh, for lack of a better word, junk corner. It's the area where we throw all of our boxes, gear, bags of clothes that we mean to give away one day. Suddenly, as if we had never noticed it before, in three and a half years of living in this loft, we thought, hey, what about the junk corner? This is a great little alcove kind of area over here. What if we transform that into a studio space for Dave? So yeah, yeah, we decided, hey, let's take folks on a cool little DIY journey with us and we'll show them how we transform this ugly, useless little corner of our loft into this really well thought out, well organized, super convenient studio space for Dave. The question on all of your minds is, Dave, why the heck are you just talking to us and not showing this to us? Well, there's a caveat. So before all of this COVID insanity began, me and Kate had a really fun trip planned with a couple friend of ours, Rob and L'Oreal Novoa. They're also photographers and videographers and we were gonna go to Iceland for Rob's birthday on a little trip. In preparation for that, I'd bought this brand new 20 millimeter Sony 1.8 lens. I was really excited to use that for some daily vlogging stuff we were gonna do in Iceland. And then all of this craziness happened and that lens arrived and it just kind of stayed in a box for a while. I never really messed with it. And so when we had this idea to do this little home renovation thing, I was like, great, I'll use my new lens. So I put it on the camera, I popped it on, eh, looks fine. Sat in front of the camera, talked for about an hour, did all this cool stuff, then looked back at the footage and realized Realize the lens was a dud. Autofocus was all over the place and then at one point my f-stop just got stuck at like 18. All of the footage we got from that was completely useless. Problem being this idiot literally only used that lens for all of this stuff and didn't stop to check the footage as we were going because pfft, it's Sony, right? It should be fine, right? Sony's a great company, right? They wouldn't send me a busted lens, right? I'm not bitter. The point being, the, the footage is barely usable. I'm gonna show you a little bit because literally the only existing footage I have of this whole corner of our loft before it became my studio, uh, I shot with that garbage lens. I'm a little salty about the whole experience. I have talked enough. Right now, I'm gonna throw it back to past Dave and Kate on that busted 20 millimeter Sony lens and show you a little bit of the before so that we can revel in the after uh, and then talk a little bit about this new studio space, how we did it, how you can do it, and why we did things the way we did. So take it away, past Dave and Kate. So this is kind of the junk corner of the entire loft. No one sees this. This is never in any videos or anything like that. We've got an organ over here that I borrowed from my buddy Jonathan Camacho for a music video that we shot here in the loft. All themselves out. And then just all this empty wall space that is completely unutilized. So we're actually going to be doing a DIY and turning this whole back area into his home studio. So started with just a little media board and now it's turned into an entire project so that I can have my studio over there uh, and kick him out. We're gonna start by painting this entire wall black because if you like our white aesthetically pleasing vibe over here, that's all thanks to Kate, if uh, you like Black on black on black on black on black, like which, me. Which I like too, oh, but okay. you know. It's best of both worlds. Yeah. We gotta start by getting all of this ish out of here and then painting this wall black and then building the charging station. It's gonna be a whole thing, but here we go. Just like that, we have ourselves a black wall. I say just like that. That took us like two and a half hours. 
Maybe, yeah. By the way, don't judge our painting skills. If you're watching that time lapse and you're like, that's not how you paint a wall. Don't at me, bruh. We don't know how to paint a wall. And I have so much respect for actual painters who do this full time. Uh, yes. I mean, we still have a little bit of cleaning up to do on the edges, but overall, we're super excited. And now we're ready to move on to phase two. Yes, yeah, so while this dries and starts to look a little more even, we're going to go build the actual charging station that sparked this whole dang thing to begin with. By the way, right now, our loft is like, a travesty. It's pretty bad, y'all. All this stuff we got to get rid of and find a home for. Uh, I don't even want to think about. So anyway, long story short, we've got a lot of cleaning up to do and then we're going to go build that charging station. Uh, and the next time we probably check in with you guys, it'll be like another day when we're less tired. Boom, just like that. It's another day and we are less tired. We are now in quarantine week four for me for him and we're trying to look half decent for you guys yes we put on some clean clothes i mean she wears clean clothes every day i'm not gonna lie i've been wearing these lululemon joggers for four straight weeks i take them off like every two days to wash them lululemon he's, he's rocking oh 100 percent. i like a, literally you could have told me a month ago lululemon and i'd be like that's for women uh, I was so ignorant, y'all. I was so ignorant. Uh, we are gonna walk you through just kind of section by section what we've done here in the studio. Um, so you can kind of see just what the thought behind that was, how we did it in case you're looking at doing something in a similar space in your place. But before we do that, I thought it would be cool to give you just like a 10, 20 second little super fun B-roll-y look at uh, all that. But between the two of us, I'm definitely the frugal one. So even though I love all this stuff, I'm trying to do it on the cheap. So even little things like um, repurposing like this backpack holder, it's actually just a guitar holder. If you think through it, you can use the things that you already own without spending a lot. Absolutely. The last thing we want is for someone to see this video and think, oh my gosh, I don't have the money. We didn't buy hardly anything to get this going. We bought really three things. That desk lamp, which is about $20 at Target. The desk that it's sitting on at allmodern.com was $156 after shipping, handling, everything. Uh, and then these three panels behind us. We got from wallcontrol.com for all three panels and 100% of the accessories that we use to hang and fasten things to it for $124. But the rest of this, 90% of what's on this wall and the way that we did all this stuff was just a result of like the last five years of accumulating the right pieces when we found them and they were affordable. What we're really hoping this does is that it inspires people at home who are maybe thinking, man, I have a space that's underutilized and a bunch of stuff that I'd like to keep more accessible. How can I find that perfect marriage of that and uh, kind of repurpose that space uh, without breaking the bank? Function and beauty all in one. Yeah. So I think the first piece that really fell into place and really solidified the vision that we had for this wall was finding wall control. We are 100% not paid or sponsored by them at all. I would love to be, so uh, hit us up wall control because we've got more walls in our space that we would love to make more efficient. But we actually found them through another video by a channel called White in Reverie. So I'm not even gonna pretend that we didn't kind of rip off their idea. But for the better part of a year now, I've been telling Kate, I wanna build a charging station where I can and easily and aesthetically put all of my camera batteries on one piece of something that hangs on the wall, grab the batteries when I'm ready to go, pop them back up there when they need to be charged, but a way that I can kind of keep it all out in one place instead of having to hide everything in boxes and then dealing with like chargers and cords being all tangled up every time I want them. So uh, we didn't build exactly what they built, but we kind of did our own inspired by version of that. And so I'm actually gonna do a whole separate video that walks through this charging station behind me. We'll walk through a little bit of it today, but actually how how I built it, I'll do a whole other video so you can see what we did and then maybe adjust that for your own needs. But really 100% of everything on this wall is 
form following function. The first thing we did is said, what do I need? Wall control really solved most of those problems. So once we had these three panels designed and installed, everything else came second, the guitar, the backpack. So before you get too far down the rabbit hole with design and how you want the space to look, really stop and think about what the space needs to do for you and let the rest kind of follow fun function. So I think when it comes to black walls, it can be a little intimidating, right? It seems like a really dark, color to commit to but i think with any space if you're doing it as an accent wall honestly like it's really cool especially when you're doing the black on black it just looks super sleek super modern um with this actually it's one of the cheaper options when it comes to paint so doing the matte black you don't really need to actually get a really high quality paint because you're not doing a gloss or anything like that i will say uh we are super like eager beaver so we painted it and then we just started like going to town. Probably give it a day, see how the light sort of reflects on it to see what little patches still need some touch up. So we're kind of gonna need to go back into fixing it up a little bit afterwards. But overall, it's a really great color to um, kind of elevate your space. And so definitely give it a try. Do an accent wall, it's super fun. I'd love to pretend like I've got this huge studio space that we want to give you like this big grand tour through. But at the end of the day, um, it's a wall. <laughs> <laughs> great, great tour. So I'm not gonna pretend like it's more than it is, but honestly, it's exactly what it needs to be. It's really kind of broken up into just two uh, sections. The first one being right behind me, uh, the charging station is just utility, 100%. I got absolutely everything I needed from wall control. It was all in one big kit, except for uh, I used some Velcro. We bought some Velcro and put that on the back of each one of the little camera chargers that I've got. I did want to make sure, again, that it was easy for me at the end of the day, when I come home from a long shoot, that I I can just set my backpack down at the desk, take all my batteries out, pop them on the wall. There's one little button down here that turns the whole thing on. And with that, absolutely everything on the wall should be charging. And you get to feel like a mad scientist. You just like flip a switch and just see the machine turn on. A little bit. The second part of like this whole utility area is just the shelf where I can display all my lenses. Again, I wanted to make it really easy so that if we're about to head out for a shoot, I can put my backpack on the desk, look up at the wall and decide, okay, what cameras and what lenses do I need? Grab them, throw them in the bag and that's it. And then this last section is just, you know, where the desk is and it's really meant to be a simple place. And sure you want it to represent the things you like, but really you want it to keep you focused and motivated on what you're doing. Uh, and so we just decided less is probably more over where the desk is. I think that's the hardest thing about a studio space in general, whether you're doing music or videography or I don't even, even like crafts and sewing. I've seen so many cool like craft rooms and workspaces and things like that. It's to say, how do I keep everything really easily accessible and still not look cluttered? And so it's a really tough balance with that. Kate does a really good job of being like, ah, uh, maybe we're done. Maybe we're done and you don't need to put more stuff on your desk. So yeah, that's really it. This is honestly just a product of us being kind of locked inside and say, okay, hey, let's make the best of this. We hope you enjoyed this. It's a really weird time right now to make a video about renovating a little corner of our house with everything that's going on in the world, but it just kind of felt good, I think, to get our minds off of everything going on. Uh, and so hopefully this helped maybe some of you do the same thing and, and, and ultimately inspire you to maybe look around at an area that you've got at your house and say, hey, I'm gonna tackle this and kind of repurpose that with what we already have here in the house. Please don't run out uh, into Walmart and face all the madness. Click away on the internet and order it again. Oh man, praise Jesus for Amazon. I've been telling Kate, I'm sitting on a mountain of footage from our trip to Japan. Mario Kart through the streets of Tokyo. We went to a fully interactive kind of digital space museum thing. Uh, saw all sorts of really cool temples, ate all sorts of delicious and uh, some disgusting food. I got footage of all of that stuff, but I've just been sitting on that because I haven't felt like since we can't leave the house right now and go to the coffee shops, like I have a place to sit down and work. So now that I have that, uh, I guess I have to work. <laughs> <laughs> but we're excited to share that with all of you guys. Um, I would love to know qu any questions you've got about the space that we didn't answer. Please leave them in the comments below this, whether this is on IGTV or YouTube, wherever you're watching this, so that we can answer those in the follow-up video. Uh, and that's it. I'm going to go edit. Bye.